Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm so sorry. I think uh, something overtook me. I wasn't able to start on time. I'm very sorry for keeping you waiting. Uh, okay, thank you, Victor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. yeah, we are very happy to see you uh, in this webinar. And we thank God that you have found time to be with us. We take it uh, as a very important and serious commitment. Uh, I'd like to say that it is a pleasure seeing you here. This is the seventh webinar. The other webinars dealt with other issues. This today's webinar, we are dealing with mediation and conflict management. Last time we dealt with retirement planning and stress management. We have also handled rescuing teens and preteens from drug abuse. Uh, we have dealt with demystifying mental illness, trauma and mental illness, and suicide and mental illness, and also nurturing adolescents and young adults. So if you missed any of this, kindly watch the recordings on my YouTube channel, Dr. Rebecca Wambua, and kindly subscribe so that you continue watching more wholesome content. Our goal here is to transform lives through empowerment. It is our hope that by the end of this webinar, you will purpose to do at least one thing differently. Uh, we have three speakers this evening, and the first speaker is Carrie Francis. Carrie Francis is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, He's the managing partner of Kari, Kari Joseph Advocates. He's a member of Law Society of Kenya, East African Law Society, Institute of Chartered Arbitrators, and formerly head of Legal Tourism Finance Corporation. Corporation. And he's head of Commercial and Real Estate Department, CJ Advocates. So he'll take us through a very important uh, topic, and that is uh, what the law says about mediation. The other speaker will be Justin Kimani. Justin Kimani is a court accredited mediator. He has MA Peace Studies and International Relations. He has worked as the chairman of Kiambu Public Service Board, and he has an MA in counseling psychology. He'll talk to us as he is a mediator. He'll talk to us about the advantages of mediation and also opportunities in mediation. Then finally, the last but not the least is Madam Jamila Mwanje. She's an educator. She's been an educator for 10 years and she's pursuing her master's program in counseling psychology at the university or at Catholic University of East Africa. She'll talk about form of conflict and strategies in conflict management. I am your host, Dr. Rebecca Wambua, a professional with over 30 years of work experience in the education sector. I have worked effectively in the university level for 14 years and in the school level for 18 years. I'm also an author of a number of books. And one of the books is The Wise. It's a popular book among the teenagers. It talks about the answers to questions they frequently ask about social life, uh, psychological life, uh, their physical changes, and so on. So it's a book that I would recommend to any parent with a teenager. There is also another book known as The House. It is a book on parenting. It talks about the developmental stages uh, of children and how we can help them at each level from the age of zero years, that is from conception to 18 years. I am effectively engaged in the community, guiding, counseling, and nurturing talents among the young people, parents, teachers, dif different professionals. I am also involved in capacity building in governmental and non-governmental institutions. And in this forum, we have Dr. Victor Ndinda. Uh, he's an associate director of the Institute of Open and Distance Learning at 
Masinde Muliro, University of Science and Technology, and he is our technical support. So we are very grateful that you found time to be here. And before we begin, I'd like to request Madam uh, Delphine to lead us in a word of prayer. Okay, let's believe and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you. I want to thank you for this day, for this evening, as we are going to discuss uh, for the evening's discussions. Father, we pray that you'll be with us. Thank you for everything and thank you for your provisions. And it is in Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you, Delphine. Uh, we are sorry the baby, I think, uh, wanted to be helped. So those are some of the challenges of online meetings. We are in our homes and we also have those few distractors. But we thank God for the online pro, uh, platforms because we are able to meet together at this time. It would not have been possible if, if we were to have a physical meeting at this time because we are all coming from diverse regions. But we thank God for the technology and also for this platform. Last time we did an evaluation and 100% of us at the end of the session told us that online platforms are very important or they are very convenient because they are flexible. People can join in at different locations and you can participate even as you're driving and so on. You can listen to what is happening. And we are very grateful for this forum. So we'd like to begin with our first speaker. And first speaker is an advocate of the High Court, as I've said, is Kari Francis. And Kari Francis, we are here to talk about mediation. Maybe in your presentation, you can tell us what is mediation? What does the law talk about, say about mediation? And can all disputes be mediated? I think that is very key, especially the last one. Can no disputes be mediated instead of taking some to court? So welcome, Francis. Thank you, Dr. Tari, and good evening to everyone. Good evening. Yeah, thank you again. And uh, since I have been ably introduced, I'll not uh, take much time introducing myself. I have nothing more to add as uh, the introduction is quite uh, conclusive. What has not been said is uh, actually not meant for this forum, and I'll not go into it. So without uh, wasting much time, I'll go directly into the issue. My presentation today uh, is uh, basically to say what the law says about mediation and uh, whether or not all uh, disputes can be referred uh, to mediation. Uh, before, uh, let me see if I have, uh, I'll be sharing uh, my screen uh, shortly, but before I do that, uh, let me just speak from where our host uh, began by asking me to define or maybe describe what uh, mediation is, and uh, uh, tied to that, I think it is equally important that we also try to describe uh, who is and or who ought to be a mediator simply put uh, mm -hmm. mediation uh, is a process where a third party actually assists two or three parties who are in dispute to try and resolve the dispute between them so it is a process in which uh, comes in a third party who is familiar with the circumstances and uh, uh, the issues between uh, two parties who are unable to resolve uh, the issues as amongst uh, themselves to facilitate communication between them with a view to having uh, a resolution that is acceptable to both parties. It is basically a process. Then uh, a mediator is this, uh, this is the third person that I'm talking about who takes the initiative, and that initiative must be with the consent of the parties, and the mediator also must be a person that is acceptable to the parties uh, to the dispute, and the mediator's role is actually to facilitate communication between the parties who are in a dispute with a view to finding a mutually satisfactory agreement for the parties. So let me just uh, proceed. Uh, 
for us uh, to proceed, uh, it is important uh, for us, just as the lawyers normally say, we must uh, put uh, a foundation for our discussion uh, this evening, and uh, the foundation is basically what we call the legal framework for uh, mediation. Uh, in Kenya, we got uh, to start by stating categorically that we do not have a standalone legal uh, statute that governs uh, mediation. However, there are quite a number of uh, laws that provide uh, uh, avenues for uh, ventilation of the uh, disputes through mediation. The first in terms of hierarchy is the Constitution of Kenya. And uh, the Constitution of Kenya, that is uh, Article 152C, 159, excuse me, 159, uh, Subarticle 2, Subarticle C, that recognizes uh, alternative uh, methods of uh, dispute resolution. And one of the methods uh, that is recognized is uh, actually mediation, amongst others, which include uh, reconciliation, mediation, arbitration, and even traditional uh, methods of dispute resolution. So uh, mediation, having been recognized uh, by the constitution, thereby becomes actually a legal uh, process. So uh, in uh, conducting a uh, mediation, then we need to abide by the provided uh, legal uh, provisions that govern the various uh, forms of uh, uh, mediation. Now, speaking to the main issue of uh, what the law says, I'll just uh, pick uh, a few legal uh, statutes that talk about uh, a mediation. Uh, I've said, I've talked about uh, the constitution, that is Article uh, 159, uh, Subarticle 2C, that recognizes the mediation. Then we have uh, the civil procedure. Civil procedure is, uh, uh, is actually the substantive law that governs uh, civil uh, uh, dispute uh, in uh, the court uh, process. And Section uh, 59B, that is under what we call uh, special uh, proceedings. Section, uh, uh, at, uh, section 59B, uh, provide for uh, alternative dispute methods, and one of them is uh, mediation. Uh, under that section, we have uh, what we call uh, court annexed uh, mediation. This is where the court in its own uh, discretion, having looked at uh, uh, a case that is already alive and uh, filed uh, before the court, the court uh, will look into that matter and uh, on its own motion, advise the parties as a first method to try and resolve that matter by way of uh, mediation. It is only after the parties have exhausted that avenue of mediation, either by going through successfully, or if the parties fail, then the same is referred back uh, to the particular court for the court uh, to proceed and uh, determine the matter to its conclusion. Uh, Apart from the civil procedure, we have Employment uh, Act, that is uh, uh, 2007, which also provides for uh, conciliation and uh, mediation between the employer and the employee before uh, the matter can be taken up uh, by the court uh, for purposes of uh, uh, litigation. Apart from uh, the Marriage Act, uh, no, we also have the Marriage Act uh, 2014, in which uh, parties to a marital dispute are encouraged, and the practical practice in uh, family division is to encourage the parties to first and foremost try an amicable solution uh, uh, of their dispute, and one of the methods of uh, resolution of the dispute is uh, mediation, uh, reconciliation, and uh, arbitration. Mediation is highly encouraged in uh, this particular instance because it allows the party to ventilate uh, the dispute without uh, actually putting their dirty linen into the public, uh, taking into consideration what uh, 
uh, family disputes are normally all about. Uh, the other element is, uh, or rather the other statute that I would want us to take into cognition is the Sports uh, Act, that is of 2013. It also provides for mediation of disputes arising from uh, the Act uh, before the same can be taken uh, to court for any uh, dispute. Uh, I would also want us uh, perhaps uh, having uh, talked about uh, those provisions, the general trend and what we are saying, even as we discuss uh, those uh, provisions, is that uh, I have not come across any statute that does not uh, promote uh, mediation and reconciliation as a way of uh, dispute resolution. So from uh, reading uh, of the text of uh, most of the statutes, it is comfortable to say that uh, almost all disputes, unless it is specifically provided by the governing law, and the governing law in this instance would be the specific statute, all uh, uh, disputes are available for referral to mediation. It is only in the instances where parties themselves opt not to refer any dispute amongst them to mediation that uh, mediation might be excluded because uh, uh, mediation, again, again, I need uh, to take home uh, from this is that mediation is a that means it is a process in what is the dispute must consent to place the dispute between them uh, before and the parties to drive uh, that process uh, going forward in terms of uh, how the mediation is to be conducted, uh, the environment in which the mediation is to be conducted, and who uh, to conduct uh, the mediation. Uh, there's a process for uh, selecting uh, a mediator, and that can be found in uh, mediation rules. One of uh, the uh, rules that have uh, since been adopted is uh, by the Nairobi, I think it is Nairobi International uh, Mediation and Arbitration Center that came into effect on the 18th of uh, December, December 2015. And mostly uh, it is used for uh, resolution of uh, uh, commercial disputes. Hello? Hello, Victor. Proceed, please, uh, Presenter. Proceed. Oh. oh, yes, I thought uh, someone was uh, making a comment. Yes, then uh, we also need uh, to understand uh, what we call uh, the types of uh, mediation. And basically, types of uh, mediation here we mean uh, uh, the jurisdiction. Uh, there could be forms of mediation which is different from. Uh, uh, types of mediation, uh, that is uh, the method uh, that are used uh, for uh, uh, conducting uh, the mediation. But in this particular one, I mean uh, the jurisdiction, in which case we have two types. We have the domestic and uh, international uh, mediation. Domestic is uh, basically mediation that in, in involves parties who are ordinarily uh, residents in Kenya, or uh, citizens of the Republic of Kenya, and uh, in uh, instances where we have corporate bodies, then those are bodies that are uh, incorporated in Kenya. When you talk of international uh, mediation, then this involves parties who are not uh, citizens of the Republic of Kenya, that is if we are talking about mediation within the Ken Kenyan context, or uh, uh, in uh, companies that are uh, not incorporated in Kenya and operate in Kenya. This uh, I need to explain further that uh, you may find the uh, companies that are operating in Kenya, but they are uh, subsidiaries of companies registered somewhere else. 
or companies where the control or uh, the head office is in uh, a different uh, jurisdiction apart from uh, the Republic of Kenya. If there is uh, a dispute between such uh, bodies or uh, parties, then that dispute will be referred to as an international uh, dispute. International uh, rules of uh, mediation will then uh, apply. Uh, then uh, uh, again, uh, tied to that, then we need uh, to understand uh, the type of rules that are applicable to mediation. I think I've alluded uh, to one of them, uh, actually to the two of them. The predominantly used at the moment is uh, the rules uh, uh, that came into effect in 2015, and those were the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration. And then we have uh, uh, court annexed uh, mediation rules that came into effect, I think, in 2022 through legal notice number 145. Uh, the court annexed mediation rules are actually the ones that govern uh, uh, cases that are referred by court to mediation. Those are uh, exclusively governed by court annexed mediation rules. And uh, for uh, cases the, or other disputes that are not before the court, then the parties can choose amongst uh, the most uh, available uh, rules and uh, the most common one is the one uh, we call uh, Nairobi Center for International uh, Arbitration and Mediation. Those are the rules that are applicable. These rules actually govern how uh, mediation is to be conducted by one uh, stating uh, uh, how an uh, a mediator is to be appointed, who can be a mediator, because according to those rules, for one to be a mediator, you must uh, meet uh, certain minimum uh, qualification and must be accre accredited uh, by the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration, uh, in which uh, pool now the parties to a dispute can pick uh, one uh, to be a mediator. Uh, secondly, uh, the mediator is someone who must be impartial and must not uh, have any interest or conflict of interest in the dispute that is supposed to help uh, parties to resolve. Uh, basically, the parties uh, are at liberty, even during the process of uh, uh, mediation, to change uh, a mediator should they feel or come to the realization that either the mediator has an interest in the, part, uh, in the uh, dispute or could be uh it exhibiting uh, characteristics that uh, might that might make the uh, the mediator to appear impartial uh the rules are quite extensive and uh, they govern uh, including uh, the fees that is uh, uh chargeable uh for the arbitrator or a mediator the fees is between uh, 15,000 per session uh, on the higher side, uh, up to about uh, 10,000. There is a specific provision for that, uh, mostly in the, especially I've seen one in the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration, uh, which I would urge uh, uh, the members here to have a look at uh, at your free time and also have a look at uh, what uh, the court are next. Uh, mediation uh, rules uh, say but that uh, i would put a rider that is mostly used by the advocates uh, in uh, conducting uh, mediation before the respective courts i had uh, also intended uh, to uh, say something about uh, uh, reasons why people prefer mediation but i've seen that uh, there's uh, a colleague and a speaker who is going to talk ex and uh, let him uh, have uh, adequate time to discuss that. Uh, extensively, and I think with that I may allow for discussions. And uh, questions, if any. OK, thank you very much, Francis, for that. I very think good I've, I've tried to be within time. 
Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for your presentation. I think it's very clear. Now we are giving this opportunity to anyone who has a comment. You can write on the chat or you can raise your hand so that you'll be given an opportunity to speak. Uh, Advocate Francis will be leaving shortly, so it's good you ask your questions now uh, because he has some other duties to perform after this. I would also add that uh, I would uh, uh, request, uh, I would also allow our host to share the email addresses so that even if someone uh, remembers anything, uh, even after the discussion, you can always uh, drop an email, then uh, we take the discussion uh, further. It should not just be limited to this discussion and this period alone. Okay. Very well. Yeah, we'll be able to do that. Any person with a question to Wakili? Or yes, a comment? I can see I Fred is on. Yes, proceed. Now, this is my question, Francis. Thank you so much for your presentation. My question is uh, about being caught accredited after one has trained. What is the procedure to follow? Do I take that or do we take uh, other? Maybe we can take maybe two or three more. If they are. Okay. If they are, yeah. if they are none, mm -hmm. I, I think we can just proceed as we get others. So that you don't waste Now, for one who has trained uh, as a mediator, for I'd you like to... to. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. You, you have muted, eh? Justin, you have muted. I am muted. Yes, I okay, can now hear you. Is that muting or unmuting? <laughs> yes. <Yeah, laughs> so, <laughs> Well done, well done, Carrie. Francis, you've covered a lot of the ground, but I just want perhaps to, you to clarify that uh, at the same time as the mediator, uh, the one dealing with the matter, the advocates for the parties can still remain uh, in the process. And they don't have to leave. They, they, they still remain uh, in, in the process. Is, if, in case the mediators, the, the parties to the dispute, uh, prefer them to be there. Very well, Senior. Uh, let me start with you as that is very much uh, uh, correct, uh, Senior. During mediation, parties are allowed to appear either uh, in person or through advocate or uh, they can appear together with their advocates and uh, the advocates will participate uh, on the mediation. Uh, the only issue here on a light note is that uh, uh, through the experience that we've had, uh, advocates are never very good in either arbitration or mediation, more particularly those who have a litigation background. We tend uh, to uh, complicate uh, matters uh, more than even uh, the parties uh, themselves, but uh, through training, most of us have learned to leave uh, our uh, litigation mind uh, in uh, our offices and put on uh, a commercial aspect, more particularly through arbitration and mediation. So, uh, 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 colleague, you are, you are quite spot on. Advocates are normally allowed and uh, are normally part and parcel of uh, the process. Uh, then uh, to the earlier question, which is uh, quite straightforward. Once one has trained and uh, has uh, qualified either through uh, the Kenya Chartered Institute of Arbitrators or through any other institute, uh, for you to be accredited, more particularly uh, to uh, the quota next uh, mediation process, one must make an application to the registrar of the High Court, who will then consider. And uh, upon consideration, uh, your, your name will be listed amongst the court accredited uh, uh, media, uh, mediators. So the, 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 the first process is one, there's a qualification and they put in uh, the list of uh, institutes that are uh, recognized uh, by the High Court from which uh, people who have uh, qualified can now apply uh, to be considered by re uh, the registrar. 
to be accredited uh, to quote uh, to participate in uh, mediation is there a charge of that process by the court uh for purposes of uh, application yes no uh to the best of my knowledge no maybe after the consideration is where now perhaps uh, to be a member uh, i'm not very clear on that but that one i can find out and uh, uh, uh let yeah, you can, know through our host there. i can help there france Gary francis uh, once you have been qualified for accreditation uh, there is a, ten, a fee of ten thousand shillings for you to be accredited and that is also the annual renewal fee very well yeah but the application itself uh i uh, the last when i dealt with it uh, does not require that you apply with the, with the, with the, any fees but when you are accepted to be able to be on the uh accredited list you pay 10000 shillings thank you senior thank you thank you very francis yeah francis uh thank you for the presentation just a quick one uh the amount of interest uh can we have uh, mediators for example in our local context who are not accredited and yet they are involved in reconciliation and mediation at the grassroots are they acceptable and if they mediate uh, and they have everything documented is it acceptable before the courts uh i uh, i don't know whether my senior justin would want uh, to help me on this because i can I, I see him smiling we, we can yeah, we can compliment one another you, you must be court accredited uh, for that case to be recognized by the court as um, uh, as binding but if you met somewhere in whatever venue and somebody reconciled you and you entered into an agreement that is personal but it, and is not valid uh, in court you've got to be court accredited for for an, a mediation process that you have gone through uh, to be recognized as a valid agreement uh, but we can deal, that, deal with that a little deeper when 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 it's my turn because <laughs> i've got some notes on that also francis uh, very well but I, I confirm uh, I, co I confirm your position senior that yeah. is the correct position that one must be accredited either through the court uh, process or through the nairobi center uh for arbitration and mediation and uh there is provision i think from uh, there's a provision for uh, those who can prove uh, experience that can be uh, established or as attained uh, through presentation of uh, documentation that might be acceptable either to the registrar or to the both to the registrar of the court or uh, an Nairobi center for arbitration but the one that we know of and uh, I'm quite clear in my mind is the one of accred uh, accreditation through uh, minimum qualification. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Francis. Uh, yes. Just to pursue Brother Angushi's question. You know, in our African culture, we have the clan system. And I especially, I come from Ukambani, and there the clan is very strong. So, for example, if they have disputes regarding land, and they're able to sit together and agree. As far as I know, that agreement is considered to be valid in court. So I think this is a, an example of informal mediators who come up with an agreement and resolve an issue, and it is accepted by court. Well, uh, as uh, I said earlier, if you look at uh, Article uh, 159, it uh, recognizes uh, uh well-established uh, traditional uh, ways of dispute resolution 
Yeah. Uh, that is uh, the that is the foundation. But for that uh, kind of an agreement, uh, more particularly with regards to land to be acceptable uh, to court, then you need to take it through certain processes. That might be the beginning, and that might, uh, from a practical point of view, that yes, you can have that uh, kind of uh, arrangement, then uh, the chief will have to endorse it. And at the point at which the chief is uh, endorsing it, uh, the chief uh, will uh, advise uh, the parties to have uh, a valid uh, agreement uh, between them. And that agreement, uh, you can have uh, that uh, mediation uh, uh, agreement uh, by the elders as part, uh, forming part of it. And uh, should there be a dispute, then the elders who participated in that process will actually come forth and be recognized uh, by court as competent uh, uh, witnesses in such kind of a dispute. So yes, these people have a role to play and the role they play has now been recognized and accepted as legal uh, process. The only uh, issue is uh, to what extent so that uh, we make it completely valid and legal uh, through the available rules that uh, my senior will be taking us through. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do we have another question? All right, if you don't yes, have another question. Just a light yes. one, light one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, during the uh, pain of a dowry, in African context, we see the people who make it the process. And this, when they come, they actually write something which is binding between them. In case of a dispute, can this be used as a, a form for mediation? <laughs> Well, uh, you, you, you know, uh, if we pick it in that context, uh, then uh, you see the only dispute that uh, would arise from that context is whether or not uh, there's a valid uh, marriage uh, between uh, uh, the, 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 the young man or the old man and uh, the lady. And uh, when you produce uh, such a document, then it goes to prove that uh, that marriage went through the accept uh, acceptable traditional uh, steps of validating a marriage yes so yes it okay. goes uh, away it goes a long way in confirming uh, that uh, the due processes which we call traditional uh, uh, steps uh, especially when we are talking about uh, a traditional uh, marriage then there are instances where a, a party will be called upon to prove that actually uh, the marriage uh, is uh, valid having been conducted uh, in a proper traditional way. So one of those documents would be that document that you are talking about. So keep it well, my brother. Yeah, that means <laughs> we have undocumented mediators that are not court accredited. Yeah. Yes, but remember... Uh, uh, no, very well, senior, proceed. No, 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 okay. I was just going to rub it in. And... Uh, um, it's, it's quite the traditional processes are are valid as long as there is no dispute dispute again arising subsequently okay. but if you want that if you really if you want that to be an, a valid uh, agreement file it in court okay all right uh but but traditions are very respected. The court respects the, 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 the traditional methods. But if disputes arise again from there, then you have to go back to court and present that process you went through traditionally as evidence that there was dowry paid in the proper manner. Correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question. Hello. Yes, yes. We yes. can hear you. So I'm asking. Now it, the, the you you have muted yourself. Hello, are yes, you getting yes, me yes. now? Proceed. Yeah, I was asking uh, that uh, issue of uh, annual renew, re renewal of um of a mediation certificate eh, with the ten thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, what if somebody skips? Uh, maybe uh, are there maybe 
at, um, a scenario where you skip maybe many many years and then you, you are removed from the, the whatever and, and in case you want to, to to come back and renew maybe after five years or two, is it possible i think we haven't developed uh, to that process uh yes. the the provision at the moment is that between October and December, the last I looked at the provision, the last, the, the, the period between October and December of that year when you have been accredited, you must uh, you must pay the 10,000 shillings to uh, keep your accreditation uh, alive. Um, I once ran on without uh, renewing my accreditation and when I went back to, to inquire, I was told to just present my uh, renewal application forms and pay the 10,000 shillings, which is what is payable. But beyond a, a certain period, I'm not sure, we need to do that homework, uh, Francis, perhaps. If yes. it's a year and more that have expired since you last uh, renewed. And, and, when, you. and when, when you have not renewed, your accreditation is suspended. Correct, mm -hmm. senior. If I yeah. may just pick up from there, I uh, think uh, you put it uh, uh, very aptly, Senior, that uh, one is only accredited and one can only be appointed as a, a, med a mediator when you have uh, uh, paid for annual uh, subscription. Subscription. Yes. Why am I saying so? I'm saying so from where I sit as an advocate that should I appear before a mediator whom I later come to uh, realize that did not have a valid annual uh, 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 subscription, then I can easily apply in case uh, the mediation is not favorable to me or I, I want to be mischievous that the, uh, the mediation process was not uh, properly conducted. So to mm -hmm. avoid uh, such kind of avenues where we thrive well is uh, to make sure that as a, a mediator, uh, uh, we always say that you have to make sure that uh, you walk in the light and uh, there's no grey uh, light shining on you. Thank you. Okay. We can proceed now. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you, senior. Thank you, our host. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Francis. I'll still be available to engage either on, on WhatsApp or uh, email. So my email is open and my WhatsApp is open. Okay. All right. Thank you very All right. much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francis, for that. I would have loved good. to stay, but let me run. Yeah. I just came in uh, this evening. I have to go and sort out a few things uh, somewhere else. I wish okay. you all, uh, all the best. Mm. And may we grow. Yeah. Don't go far. I'll, I'll need you from time to time. Uh, Dr. Ari, kindly pass uh, my number to my senior. I think I'll also need him more than he'll need me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank I'll you. share your number on the chat so that if anybody wants to interact with you, they can just call you. I'm always Thank open you. to receiving uh, 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 calls uh, until uh, midnight, after midnight. No call is acceptable. There's a boss. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you I come for that. All time. right. Uh, have a blessed evening. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Francis. That was very insightful. Uh, let's go to the next presenter. The next presenter is Justin Kimani. He'll talk to us about advantages of mediation and also. Please share with us opportunities in mediation. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ari, and thank you, Kari Francis. If you've, you've actually um, uh, taught me quite a few things that I wasn't quite uh, fresh in my mem in my mind. Um, And I'm trying to I'm trying to 
share? Am I sharing anything? Not yet. Yes. Not yet? No. Am I audible? Yes. On my side, I'm, I'm sharing, but uh, uh, Dr. can you help in, in sharing? I had warned you I might not be very familiar with the PC I'm using. Okay, let me share. Yeah, please. Okay, are we together? Uh, you are sharing? You, you can yeah. see? We can see. Yeah, it's visible. It's visible? Mm, just proceed. Is it in, in that format, uh, screen sharing? Yes. Yes, you can see it. I can see it. I can see it now. I'm dealing with um, uh, what is mediation, and I don't need to go through that except perhaps to highlight one or two things. You can see that that bit. Yes. What is mediation? Yes. And, uh, and, and yes. it was it was explained very well by 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 uh, by Carrie Francis that it is an opportunity for parties in dispute to resolve their differences for themselves for themselves without involving the judicial process i'm i'm repeating for themselves and also repeating without involving the judicial process and it is extended which it is undertaken as I, as was said by an external party person or persons um and it fosters the settlement of differences between directly interested parties. One other thing which he emphasized, and I need to overemphasize it, is that the mediators must be neutral. Even though they might have a general interest in the, in the matter, they must act neutrally. These are the very important features of a mediator, as we shall see further down. He has talked about the, the statutes which have provided for um, the ADR, and do you remember ADR is Alternative Dispute Resolutions, one of which is mediation. He also talked about the other ADR uh, approaches to a settlement of disputes. Um, the only other thing that I would like to emphasize is the court annexed mediation. That means that the, the, the matter has gone to court and the court has looked at the matter and decided that that matter is suitable for a mediation process rather, through a, through, rather than through a court process. So that need not be rubbed in I think any further, he has ably referred to the stat statutes which uh, are allowed or can use uh, the mediation process. Um, the next cases, the quote next cases. Let me let me go through that. The mediation rules provide that after the court screens the suits filed in the court, it will refer the suitable ones, not the suitable ones. It means that there are some which might not be suitable for um, for, medi for a mediation process. I believe it's due to their complexity. The court may itself conduct the mediation or refer the same to the, to, to the mediation registrar for allocation to a qualified mediator. Really, that is a repetition of what uh, Carrie Francis said. The mediation registrar shall appoint a mediator to conduct the mediation, or he can, uh, the mediator can be chosen by mutual agreement of the parties. That's another feature of mediation that is very, very important, that the mediator must be acceptable. To the parties. Now, I want to, refer, to, re, to remind you about uh, Kofi Annan when he came to mediate uh, 
Kenyans in dispute. Remember, before he was accepted, there were others who had been rejected, proposed and rejected. So it's a very important feature of mediation that the mediator must be accepted by the parties themselves, not merely because the court has appointed that mediator. A mediator can be appointed by the court, by the parties to the dispute one of them or both of them say no, this one is biased or is biased in this or the other uh, aspect, and that mediator will be changed. Uh, let me also emphasize this that this process of mediation is voluntary. It is voluntary. Even if the court found that this case is suitable for mediation and the parties do not like to be mediated, it will not go through the mediation process. It is voluntary and, and it emphasizes the advantages, advantages which include retaining control of the outcome of the dispute, speed and cost savings. We shall go through that again, but please notice early about the control of the process is in the hands of the disputants themselves, not in the mediator himself. The control in terms of uh, timing, the control in terms of uh, cost is in the hands of this, the, the disputant. The, dis the word disputant sounds very technical, but it is you and me who are disagreeing over a matter. Um, another very important feature of mediation is that you and me who are in dispute, resolve our own dispute. And if you look at the bottom of my note, it says, revives, the mediation revives, restores, revitalizes relations. That is very important, a very important decision why we should go for mediation more than the court process, because mediation also is, revives and revitalizes relations between the parties. Compare that with the court process where one person wins and the other loses. So one party is left aggrieved and the, the relationship is soured to that extent, no matter how fair the judgment might sound. I hope we are there together. So in a, a process of mediation, people must be allowed to, to talk freely. They must be able to listen to one another and it must be their resolution, not the mediators. Uh, this presentation was, was for both ourselves here and for, uh, for a church I was uh, going to present it to. Um, and I have listed there, when I give you these notes, you can go through the list of scriptures listed there and see what they say about magician. I will not spend time on it. I think we are far spent in time, but uh, we can revisit it should there be a, a, a surplus time. So, remember that what we are dealing with here is the party's conflict, not the mediator's. Therefore, the mediator will encourage the parties to work towards resolution of their issues. And just in case I overlook this, we are saying the mediator should, will, let's say will, but should encourage the parties to work towards resolution of their issues. The mediator will not impose any resolution or outcome on the parties. The parties are encouraged to, encouraged to, uh, report back to stakeholders in the in the conflict. Usually, um, a mediator will be required to report back to the appointers the process, how the process went, and what decision will be was reached. That way, the, the mediator has an obligation to find out from the parties what he should report when he goes back to the parties who, uh, who, who, who appointed him, who, who uh, chose him as, the, as an acceptable mediator. 
So there we are. And I think that's where I was mainly required to come in. Uh, because most of what I've said is a rubbing in of what Kari Francis has said. And the advantages of meditation, one of them is that the meditation is quick in reaching solution. The cases we have dealt with and next, but, uh, the quote and next ones require that we finish that matter within either 60 or 70 uh, uh, days. And if the matter goes beyond that, we apply for an extension of time. You can imagine land issues which you know about, which have gone on and on for years on end, of upwards of 40 or 50 years, no matter in mediation that I know of takes months. I hope we are together there. Quick in reaching solution is supposed to. We remember it's you and the other party who are reaching a solution. Uh, it is cost effective. Remember the, the cost you have to pay to the lawyers. And, and um, I, in, a, in a way, and with a light touch, I'm happy Carrie Francis has left because their interest, I'm happy he's not hearing, is that the matter goes on because each time they, they, they meet, they levy a fee. No, there is no cost to the parties in court and next meditations. I hope you notice that. Even the mediator himself is not paid by the parties. The mediator is paid by the courts. That is, if the case was referred to for mediation by the court. But if the parties chose on their own volition, the mediator, then what they pay, which is now regulated, uh, is a matter between the mediator and the parties. And it is also dependent on the value of that particular case and how long it takes. Uh, the other very important matter, and I've mentioned it already, is that parties are in charge of the process. Parties are in charge of the process. In the court uh, uh, process, the parties are not in charge of the process. It depends on whether the court is available, the magistrate, the lawyers themselves, and they can postpone and postpone forever. You have no, you have no, you don't take charge, you, the parties who have a dispute. The mediation is easily accessible. Once you report, report the matter to court, the court will quickly decide whether or not this is suitable for mediation, and it will be referred to the to the mediation process, if it's not getting joy there, it can be referred back to court. Very few people who understand mediation will want matters uh, to go back to court, to be there indefinitely. There's one matter I've just dealt with not so long ago. The parties refused to proceed in uh, the, the mediation process. One of the interested parties was at that time over 80 years. That's about, it's a few years ago. And no skill I reserved to help them resolve in their lifetime that matter that could help them. They refused and they are back to court. I talked to them last week and they are back to court. It opened. Right now is my screen. Can you hear me? Yes, you're back. Yes. Am I, I'm, I'm back. I'm not going actually, but maybe the media. What I'm saying is that even currently, currently in this country, we are living in a very stressed environment very anxious environment. A mediation is a very friendly environment because you brought yourselves together to so it revives relationships. It maintains confidentiality and Carrie Francis referred to that, washing that linen in public. It remains a matter between the parties and not beyond that. 
It's a good thing, and I teach uh, pre-retirement planning. It's a very good uh, process if you are a mediator uh, to be your occupation in your sunset years. You use your wisdom, you use your training to solve people's disputes. You enjoy people living together again, holding hands and living together uh, in more friendly circumstances. It is fulfilling. That's what I'm saying under, under the retirement pastime occupation. And those are some of the cases which are uh, best dealt with in and the mediation process mainly, and because we are aware of very many court cases, some of the ones I have mentioned down there are public knowledge. So you can't say we are uh, backbiting them or we are defaming them. They are in the public domain. Cases which have remained in court for many, many years. Those who are, who are born those years, you remember when uh, the minister Koinangi at that time was, was, was a minister, since he passed on soon after the, the founding father of the nation also passed on, the matter of his estate are still in court as we speak. Um, some of us were born, I'm not one of them at that time. And if they are going to be beneficiaries, 50 years later, they are not beneficiaries. The people who benefit from court, such matters being dealt with in courts are trustees, lawyers, accountants, and others. And I'm not speaking behind their back. I'm one of them. And they, will, they, they keep on um, living on those cases, year in, year out. Um, that was dealt with uh, by the, the set ground rules for the process, respect for each other. Civility, the way you speak to each other self-control you can't go for a mediation and uh, you shouldn't uh, i mean you can't but, uh, but you shouldn't you should have self-control you took yourselves there otherwise you should have gone to court in the process you should not have telephone calls coming in and out in and then because you are interrupting the process agree on estimated time during um, time duration of the session this is actually a mediation process it's as if i'm teaching you how to how to behave when you are in being mediated and the mediator should explain the process uh, that the process will begin in a joint session when you prescribe the rules um, it may require breaking into caucuses. We are familiar with caucuses. Uh, even sometimes groups from either side go together and uh, uh, discuss how they can break the, the what do you call it, the impasse. The meditator is also supposed to explain how the parties should communicate in the process. I'm rushing because Tatari hates people who exceed their time, and I'm one of those. The process can be draining. If the matter is a serious one, the parties can be very tired. So, uh, uh, um, and so it is sometimes necessary to adjourn to a mutually agreeable uh, time to come back when you have been rejuvenated, when you have recuperated, and start all over again, and you'll come back with new ideas. Uh, receive confidential when you when you retreat you you get confidential information from those uh, you, you, on your side. Um, when you get tired, you start repeating yourselves in matters you had already discussed, uh, and and so on. We are saying that the process can be draining. I think I will not dwell on that very much. We allow caucusing. What is caucusing? For example, if I'm a mediator on the side of one on one group and another one, another mediator on the side of the other, we can be allowed to caucus with each group. Caucusing, what is caucusing? I'm sure we are aware about caucusing. Uh, how far can we go? How much further can we come? What is our limit? You have heard this gentleman called who, the one who talks about uh, irreducible minimum. You must get to agree on we cannot go beyond that. No, we can give a little more. Let's give a little more. Let's get out of this. So that is caucusing. 
to explore uh, settlement possibilities with each other in in safety. Allow caucusing, I've covered that. Uh, in caucusing, be conscious of the time you allocate to both parties. So don't allow one party to spend too much time and allow less to the other. You must be fair to both parties. I started running. The solutions are with the parties. We are repeating that. It's very important. The solutions are with the disputants, not with the mediator. The mediator has skill of guiding people to what is likely to be an agreement. So e examine details in the parties' claims, defenses, and perspectives. You listen to them talking, you will be able to pick better than themselves what they are likely to agree on, and you can steer them to that possible, that potential agreement. Consider each party's positions, expectations, and possible outcome if the case goes to litigation. If this matter fails to be resolved in the um, in the mediation, you can be sure it will be much more difficult to resolve in the courts. And the court will just look at it that way. If you didn't resolve it there, then it means you have all the time to wait. I hope they are not hearing. Help them reach agreement. Help the parties to reach agreement. Because the parties have themselves got each individual uh, uh, intentions, they know how far they can go and how far they cannot go. So, But help them come closer each time they discuss. Discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the respective cases each party is putting across. You can listen to them and you can hear that this one will not bend. So when you go for caucusing, tell them, ask them, is this the irreducible maximum? And when you go back, um, you can disclose to the parties that this, this one, we had better not go beyond it. Now, if you look at the bottom of that slide, we are, we are saying called to be peacemakers. This slide and others in my presentation have been borrowed from one of the trainers, um, and I forgot to edit that to make it mine, but uh, I'm not plagiarizing, I'm acknowledging. Help them to narrow their differences. We have talked about that. And the narrowing differences are such as we we'll, we'll reach best alternative to negotiated agreement, partner, best alternative to negotiated agreement, Watna, worst alternative to negotiated agreement, Mlatna, this has nothing to do with the, with the Moratina, the beer, most likely alternative to negotiated agreement. I hope you are still there. You know, I can't see you, my colleagues. Yes, are you yes. still there? Yes, we are. Uh, prodding to bring out more. Now, this is a, a mediation process. What we are saying is that a, a, a party to the mediation process uh, might say something which is not clear to the mediator. We have skills to prod into that issue to help the party to bring out more that could lead the other party to an agreement. So can you help me understand what you have just said? It will help all the parties. You can ask close questions, uh, which can also be useful to specify some information. Ask questions that bring out positions. What is your claim in this estate? And so I'm try it's as if I'm teaching you how to, to mediate. And that is really not part of this, but you have a glimpse of it. Point parties to an agreement. So through light to emerging settlement, when you see that parties are approaching a settlement, encourage them. We are getting there. Encourage creativity and wider perspectives. Show parties what this means if they pursue it in that direction. And see when there is potential for offers and put them in other words so that both parties can see what each of the other parties meant. In case of a settlement, ensure the following. You must confirm orally what you understand from the settlement the people, the parties have reached. The agreement is signed by all parties and the mediator for it to be valid. Now, 
a copy of the signed agreement is furnished to the parties. And let me say this, because it may not be in my notes, there is no appellate jurisdiction to an agreement reached by in mediation if it is filed. There is no appeal. So make sure that if you are going for the mediation, which you have seen the very many uh, and important advantages of, make sure that it is agreement and a court and, and, and a copy signed in court. If the case in the if the case originated from the court, the agreement is filed in court where the court adopts it as a judgment. Adopt it, adopts it as the judgment of the court. That is very important. That agreement should stipulate all agreed terms. You must avoid ambiguity. The, your agreement must not be subjected to more than one interpretation. And that is perhaps one of the reasons the lawyers who are very sharp in language should uh, still remain in uh, a mediation case and a mediation process. But remember, it is um, your, a mediator's matter now. It's not a lawyer's matter. But they still remain, the lawyers still remain in the peripheries because Originally, the, 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 the parties were their clients, and they are interested in how the matter ends. Uh, the, be, dra be drafted in plain, the agreement should be drafted in plain, space, uh, precise, and unambiguous language. You've already said that. Use active voice as far as possible. It should state clearly who will do what, when and where, and how. These are details of the agreement that should appear in the avoid legal jargon, which my colleague lawyers are very fond of, especially in a court process. But by the way, just to mention, uh, lawyers who are also meditators are very, very good. They know how to uh, tone down the jargon. Um, uh, Dr. Rebecca, am I still within time or I should part now? You should be concluding. Yes, I'm heading there. So review with the parties in the areas of agreement where you have reached, review with them present with their minds fresh to listen to what they have just said and narrow down any differences. To the extent possible, review the reasons for no, for no agreement for now so that if you are postponing or adjourning to another day to refresh, you, you better, uh, and clarify why you have reached that point and what you, what more you are going to look for when you come back. Let parties know they can reopen the matter, matter later to, med to meditate with or without you as a mediator. Those are the common cases which uh, our, 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 our previous um, uh, speaker mentioned about. They can be cases to do with matrimony, including property, title to title to and use of land. Let me remind you that when your land is in dispute, when the land is in dispute, both parties are denied its use. So if you keep it in court, it has, it's as good as it was not there at all. Other issues are succession disputes, disputes in, involving custody of children, uh, non-work non injury, Claims that another one, I think it's on the same line as that of custody of children. Assessment of courts, fees, and uh, intergovernmental relations. I think that might not be familiar with that, but because I'm, I've worked for the counties as chairman of the boards, I remember that to be a case, a good case for mediation. Uh, you must be a current member in good standing of a professional body. Be certified as professional mediator from established mediation training centers, which are there. Uh, attend, uh, attended and completed a medium um, a mediation course of not less than 40 hours training. And you must have completed at least three mediations. I want to mention here that there is an internship process which has started recently. I didn't go through that myself. I was fortunate because besides being trained by the current trader, trainers, I already had a 
a master's degree in mediation. So I was exempted from many of those uh, processes. And if you are that qualified yourself, you might also be uh, admitted. But there is an application for accreditation. I'm hoping I can move on. Can you move me on, Dr. Dr. it seems like uh, her, her knee is, is, is a problem. Uh, Rebecca, your, right. your connectivity seems like has issues. Oh, okay. So where are, you, where are you? I'm already on the closing statement. No, before, before that, before that, before that, just before that. Um, before that, then, even if it's not appearing, I was seeing I would have shared an article. It wasn't there, but I can share an article, article on magician, uh, which I had um, published. And when I circulate these notes, I could circulate it with them. Am I audible? Yes. Proceed. Yes. Yeah, there is an article. Of, I write articles in the newspapers, and one of them was about the benefits of the mediation. Uh, I could produce it there because it was going to be very long. Um, but I will circulate it to you, uh, colleagues, with these notes. Okay. Um, I want to thank the parties and the advocates for their participation. So that is what you should do if you are the mediator. You should thank the parties and the advocates for their participation and efforts to add a settlement. And I'm not able to move that slide any further. Oh, now I can. I don't want to go through that because the lawyer uh, did it. Uh, good listening skills. Uh, could of conduct of a mediator be professional at all times, be neutral, be attentive, be confident. And my ending of the presentation is actually the beginning of your career as a mediator. That's why I'm saying the beginning. Sorry to keep you there for longer than you had prepared for, but I'm done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, someone is asking, are you aware about any scholarships for mediation? Somebody wants to be trained in mediation. Are you aware of any scholarships, Justin? Or not scholarships. But let me say this, that um, for you to be, if you have the basic qualifications which we mentioned about a first degree, the only other training you need to go through is a, um, a week's training through the, um, I think it's in my notes, there are several organizations which can train you for a week to enable you to apply for uh, accreditation, which costs about 50,000 shillings. That when I attended, I was one of the earliest, it was costing 45, now it's gone up to 50. But I am not aware of any, uh, what did you call it? Scholarship. Scholarship, and yeah. If you have a first degree, you really need just one week of training as a mentor. A first degree in what? A, a first degree in what? In chemistry, in mathematics? In, no, any degree, a first degree. Okay. In any discipline. Okay. Are we, are we together? Not not mathematics. Don't don't study mathematics to be a, a okay. mediator. <laughs> any, 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 any degree can be a any first degree even and a then go through, oh yes even an engineer yeah. even a even an, um, a doctor of medicine hmm. a first okay. degree all right uh, Dr. When, you. when you when you circulate this note please ask me to include the bodies which are training uh, one of them is headed by Judge Mudoga. He's a, he's a very, he's the one which has trained more than anyone else, but there are others. I'm not marketing for them, but it's one of them. Let me also say that uh, although the court process mediations are moving slowly, the private ones are very many. For those who have realized that that process is that faster, is that cheap, uh, not is less costly, and the other benefits are listed. That presentation. Uh, now, because of time, we'll not take further questions. We'll go to our third presenter, and that is Madam Jamila. She is an educator.
has been in the field for 10 and more years. Welcome, madam. Before Thank you so much. Proceed. Okay, just uh, give me a few minutes, I share my slides. And uh, also allow us to see your face. Maybe as she shares the, the slides, I can be reading the comments. Elizabeth Yagon says, thanks for the presentation. I had seen the course on mediation being offered by Park University and others. And I was curious to learn more. Now this has answered lots of my questions. Thank you. Wairimo Karongo says, okay, that is great. Information on how one can qualify for mediation courses. I think you've answered. Uh, Jack Jacob is asking, any age restriction? Is there any age restriction, Justin? Uh, no, in fact, the older the better. We, old people are very wise. They mediate through wisdom of age. There is and no the younger, age. The younger, uh, that, I'm, like 16, I'm, 12. I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's unlikely that at 16 you'll have had your first degree. So, <laughs> but, there is no but there is no prescription on the lower age. First degree. Uh, so. Rebecca, you are bandwidth is yeah. so is so weak. You are just doodling, eh? Okay. Yeah. You so can, the, there's no prescribed. I, mm -hmm. oh, Justin, okay. Justin, is there any course apart from past degree as a mediation course? Just do mediation diploma or uh, without doing a, a bachelor's degree. It must, it must be a, the prescription at the moment is a first degree. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Jamila? But I must encourage yes. you to, you, to still try because since I qualified myself, it's quite a while, and perhaps things have changed in the recent past as far as thank qualification. You, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. We will let's allow Jamila to proceed. Jamila, proceed. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Justin and Carrie, for your presentation. It was so insightful as well on my side. I've learned a lot. And I'm not so sure whether everybody is able to view my screen. We are seeing you. Yes, we can see you. Okay. So my topic today was, uh, was to present on forms of conflict and strategies in conflict management. Uh, as, uh, as I have to start, I will begin by looking at the definition of what a conflict is. In our daily life, we've realized that uh, conflicts are part and parcel of our life, and uh, they, in one way or another, impact on us positively or negatively. But then let us just begin by looking at the definition of conflict, and we can just say that conflict is a result of opposing thoughts, actions, or ideas disrupting the status quo or normalcy. We can also say that a conflict can be defined as an unrest that is caused by conflicting ideas, goals, and occurrences. That means that uh, when we are not in our normalcy or in our normal condition, peaceful, due to a trouble or a problem somewhere, then we are likely to be in a conflict. I want to move on to the types of conflicts that we have. We can say that we have two branches or main um, types of conflicts, and that one is internal conflict or external conflict. Internal conflict is a conflict that occurs on the side, on the inside of a person or within a person or a given group that has a common goal. When we look at the internal conflict, we can still say that there are two types of internal conflicts. We mention or we, we realize that under internal conflict, we have what we call intrapersonal conflicts and intragroup conflicts. Intrapersonal conflicts are conflicts that occur in one's mind. That is you as an individual. You may be 
um, in your own way having a conflict within yourself in that there are some ideologies or norms or standards or principles that you uphold, but then there is something that you are expected to do that may, may, may make you to go against your principles. Then for that case, you will definitely get into an intrapersonal conflict. Under the ex internal conflicts, we also have what we call the intra-group conflicts. This is an internal conflict that occurs within a contained group of people due to their different personalities. That means, let's say for an example, within an organization, an organization has a specific goal, aims, and a vision. But within the organization, yes, it's one group, but people may have varied views on a certain ideology that is coming up. And for that case, they are likely to get into an intra group conflict. The other type of conflict that I mentioned was the external conflict. And external conflict occurs between two people or more than one group of people. The two types of external conflicts are interpersonal conflict or intergroup, inter, sorry, intergroup conflict. When you talk about interpersonal conflict, it's a a conflict that occurs between two people, intergroup conflict occurs between two or more groups of people. The conflicts can also be in form of a task conflict or workplace conflict. This is uh, a conflict that may arise at your place of work due to your different ideas or uh, views about something that is uh, happening within the organization. Then the other type can also be relationships, whereby within our families, uh, uh, at a family level, let's say uh, a conflict between a spouse and the other partner, a conflict between the parents and the children, a conflict between a brother and a sister, that is the sibling conflict. Then we also have what we call value conflicts, these are conflicts that arise from differences in our identities and values like politics, religion, norms, and other deeply held beliefs. Um, just to give an example, like for instance, uh, last year we were in a political dispensation, and uh, you will realize that we may not have agreed in one way or another with each and every person or each and every politician, just because we didn't love the ideologies or we were not in, inclined to whatever they were advocating for. So that can be in form of value conflicts. Um, sources of conflicts in our life, for a conflict to occur, there must be a reason that leads to that. And among the sources is what we call uh, desire. Desire is uh, like the will or the inner motive that really... Um, propels you to deeply or uh, eagerly be in want of something. When you talk about uh, desire, my desire may um, contradict somebody else's desire, and for that case, we may not be in an agreement. Then we also have what we call disagreement. A disagreement may occur at any level or whichever environment that an individual may be in. Then another source is uh, miscommunication which is very uh, common in our places of work. It's common in our family levels, in church and wherever we find ourselves. This uh, can be in a manner that I have the information, yes, but I present it in the wrong way. I have the information that I'm supposed to present, but then I give the wrong person who is not supposed to be. Or I may give the information that is correct, but then the person who receives the information interprets it differently or uh, not as I meant. And for that case, it may lead to a conflict. Then we have what we call power struggle, which can also lead to a conflict, whereby we are all striving or struggling to get into power. For that case, we are likely to end up into a conflict. Greed and materialism, um, uh, nature of human beings may also lead to 
a conflict. We also have relationship issues. For instance, let's say uh, infidelity in families or in marriages, um, in disciplined children or uh, truancy in school going students may lead into them being in a conflict with the school management. We also have the aspect of change can be a source of conflict because we know that um, change is inevitable in our life. But then when change comes, human beings or um, the society doesn't really take it positively at first. It has to struggle so much and much has to be done by the person that is initiating the change in order for people to accept. Before they accept, they really conflict so much about it. Then uh, what I want to mention under sources of conflict is that uh, we need to understand that we have our own way of looking at things and we act according to what we think is proper to us. And for that case, being in conflict is in an inevitable part of life because we all possess our own opinions, ideas, and sets of beliefs. My idea and my belief may not be as yours. And for you to accept that this is how things should be, it may really not be easy for you. And for that case, I may uh, advocate for my uh, values, yet you have your own values which are conflicting with mine. Hence, we end up into a conflict. Uh, the next part that I have to present on is the strategies in conflict management. When or how do we go to resolving conflicts in our families, in our society? I want to look at it from two points of views that we can resolve conflicts as third parties and we can also um, resolve conflicts as the participants within that particular conflict. As a third party, that means um, you are not part of the conflict, but you come in, like um, Justin Kimani had just mentioned, uh, you come in as an, a mediator. So as a third party, you are only but helping the affected participants to come to a resolution. And for that case, there is uh, what we call mediation. I will not go into details because uh, uh, the... the, the, the other speakers have already mentioned about it. And when we talk about mediation, which is now informal in this case, we can have a mediator being a boss to a staff that has an issue with the other. We can have a parent mediating in a conflict between the siblings. We also have a sibling who can mediate a conflict within the other siblings. Other than that, we can have therapists or counselors, teachers, religious leaders or friends who can come in to help people resolve a conflict. Another thing that can help you as a third party solve a conflict that may lead to loss or uh, even uh, death uh, is communication. As a mediator or a third party, you need to listen and share your views. First thing is uh, listen to both parties without uh, uh, prejudice or biasness. In that, at the end of it all, like my other speakers had mentioned, you help them to get into a mutual agreement and a resolution to the conflict that they are facing. For that case, listening is very crucial. You listen to both parties so that you know where the problem began and then um, who may have been the cause of this problem and how you can go about helping them. And then after that, you then go ahead to share your views but you share in a manner that you are expressing unconditional positive regard and uh, genuineness. You be genuine and open to all of the both parties. Then finally, come up with a resolution as a mediator. You don't just go into solving a conflict and then you let the people or the parties that are in a conflict uh, go away without having found a solution. You need to help them come into a resolution. Um, Francis mentioned that uh, as, a, as a mediator, you are not supposed to actually, you, you don't have the solution, yes, but through your talking, you can be in a position to help the parties identify where they were wrong and hence come to a resolution. Um, how do we resolve conflicts as the participants? You yourself is part of the conflict. How do you go about resolving the conflict? The first thing 
you need to understand or to do is you need to embrace accommodation and be accommodating. What do I mean by that? You deal with the problem with an element of self-sacrifice for the sake of peace. At times, you may be forced to yield to what others want. And for that case, you must be selfless in order to satisfy others. I know it's not easy, but at times, it is always good to be accommodating. Appreciate that you are in a conflict. There is a problem, yes. But then be ready to sacrifice. You can, uh, you can sacrifice your comfort just for the sake of peace or maybe um, your ego just for the sake of peace. And this can be very effective in families. It can be effective in our places of work and even in our churches whereby we need to be able to self-sacrifice or to sacrifice for the sake of peace. Um, another way that a participant can help solve a conflict or resolve a conflict is avoiding. When you talk of avoiding, this is withdrawing from the conflict when the negative outweighs the positive outcomes. Though avoiding may not apply in all situations, but what I mean is that um, when you look at the conflict, the pr problem that has uh, come between the two of you or the two parties, look at it and see. However much we are in a conflict, how, what are the positive things that will come out from this conflict? If you feel like the benefits outweigh the disadvantages, then it is always good to, um, you can go on with the conflict. But where you feel... Because of this conflict, there is more that you are going to lose or you are going to waste more, more, more of your time than the or resources. The best thing is you just have to avoid. As a participant, again, there is what we call collaborating. This can help you again resolve a conflict. And collaborating involves you cooperating with other parties involved to creatively come up with a successful resolution without compromising your own satisfaction. That's, uh, that means, let's say there was a mediator or maybe you are solving the problem between the two of you or the two parties that are in, uh, um, involved. You need to be creative enough, enough to come up with a resolution without compromising your own satisfaction. Now, this is not like avoiding. Here, you, you consider yourself and you know that however much I'm collaborating, at the end of it all, the resolution must satisfy both of us, I included. The other way of resolving a conflict as a participant, again, is what we call competing. And this is aggressively, uh, you, instill, you aggressively instill pressure on the other parties to achieve your goal using all means you can, uh, you can use to attain it aggressively instill pressure on the other parties to achieve your goal using all means that you can uh, you can in order to attain it i think that is self explanatory i don't need to dwell on that so much we also have what we mean, we call compromising as a resolving uh, strategy compromising is where you come up with a resolution that is acceptable to the involved parties you even sacrifice your goals as the other parties also do the same. This is a give and take scenario. Yeah, you compromise knowing that the other party will also compromise either their comfort uh, just for the sake of this resolution to be uh, reached out. Uh, in conclusion, I would say that for a conflict to be resolved amicably, one needs to develop conflict listening, uh, conflict resolution skills, and among them are listening effectively, like we had earlier on mentioned, then uh, focus on specific issues without generalizing or escalating. You focus on the specific issues, sort the problem as you see it, even at your own level without escalating it to another person who may look at it in a different way. Then another thing that you need to have a resolution, uh, conflict resolution skill is uh, you need to identify specific points of disagreement for you to come up with an amicable resolution. 
know why or what was the root cause of this disagreement. If it was finances, then you focus on that. If it was communication, then focus on um, uh, going about improving your communication. Then another thing is um, express your own needs clearly. Be clear. Yeah. Call a spade a spade. Yeah. Don't go uh, being vague or ambiguous like uh, uh, Francis had mentioned. You need to be clear in your presentation so that you are able to be understood what you really need. And this will help uh, you, res you uh, develop conflict resolution skills. Another thing is um, you need to view the conflict or the challenges that you are going through as an opportunity for growth. Don't look at every conflict negatively. There are some conflicts that the results may help you really grow either career-wise, spiritually, socially, psychologically. So for that case, let's not look at all conflicts to be um, or, or just a cause or a source of challenges to us. Each and every conflict, there must be something good or bad that will come out of it. And if it is dealt with properly, this can lead to personal growth and other positive things or results. Um, let's say uh, you are in a conflict where your land had been grabbed by somebody, yeah? And then you know very well that the land belongs to you and the person has no right over the ownership of that uh, particular land. If you go on fighting for it, at the end of it all, you will have your own resource at the, uh, and your family will be safe. But then when you uh, back off earlier, like we had said, um, in avoiding, then it means that you will have uh, lost at the end of it all. So, however, it is mostly looked at negatively. Uh, what I mean is that um, conflict can be good or bad, but in many cases, people look at conflicts with negativity, not knowing that a conflict can have a positive impact. Um, Another part is that a, con a conflict occurs when one is faced with a tough decision between two opposing ideas. That is just but a recap of what I had already talked about in the introduction, that a conflict occurs when one is faced with a tough decision between two opposing ideas or the individual's actions are against their morals. That means well, if it's an internal conflict, within you, you are not at peace of whatever action you want to do. And for that case, there will be a conflict. And to that, I think it brings me to the end of my presentation. I've uh, tried to rush because of time, but I'm so grateful for everyone who has just spared their time to listen to me. Thank you so much and be blessed.